We are at Taman Sethu School right now, where we are constructing two earth bag classrooms, which you can see around here. So first, uh, in order to understand what earth bags is all about, we will try and understand one component at a time, that is earth and bag. So if you see the construction which is taking place around here, we are using discarded cement sacks as the bag. So what happens is if you use a cement sack directly as is and then fill it with mud and once you tamp it, you will have corners which are slightly soft. So what we have done is we have turned the bags inside out so that these corners are not formed. So these are the bags which are used for the earth bagging which is taking place around here. So now we will take a look at the earth. This is earth which has been uh, brought from uh, a construction site which is a couple of kilometers down south from here. And if you look at the mud, the kind of mud that is being used is of a particular type which has a low clay content, around 20% clay content and it's slightly sandy, it's on the sandier side. So what we are doing is we have kept this depot slightly moist, we have watered it down so that it absorbs all this water so that we can get a consistency which is something of this sort so that it's not too wet, not too dry. It is once you press the mud together, it forms a ball and once you drop it, it should break in small fragments such as this. So if you observe the mud which we are using is moist but not too wet nor is it too dry and it is of a particular quality. So the clay and sand content is something which you have to look out for. So we saw what the bag is like and we saw what the earth is like. And now we should take a look at what the earth bagging is like. So there's a procedure which is being fo followed over here. Uh, each bag is filled with three units of mud, three gamelas of mud which we can see over here. Then three, three are put in one bag. The bag is then folded, the mouth is closed and then it is put in place. What we shall see over here is what exactly happens after that. If you take a look over here, what is that the bags have been placed, they've been tamped and between two courses of bags, you have barbed wire. The barbed wire acts as Velcro mortar, it holds the courses together. So this is what acts like mortar in this kind of masonry that we see around here. And what we will see is the bags are being tamped. So the bags have been laid in place, the barbed wire has been laid in between. And what we can see is he is tamping the bags to consolidate them to approximately 5 inches height of per, of each course. So what happens is you have some sort of regularization even in such an unconventional type of construction. So there is a sort of a method to whatever we are doing, the the water consistency, the, the mud consistency, the amount of things used. So you have three units which are put in one bag and one bag which is put in place with two strands of barbed wire between two courses and also then it is stamped to approximately 5 inches height of a course. So if you take a look, the barbed wire has already been placed on the wall and now they are placing the bags on top in a way that, that the joints are broken. So like in conventional masonry, what you will have is you cannot have joints on top of each other. The joints have to be staggered so that the wall is slightly monolithic in its nature in the way it behaves. And so the barbed wire also contributes to the same. So the, the wall actually starts acting more monolithic than what it would have been if these were loose units or loose adobes. This is also known as super adobes because these are big, large size, extra large size adobes that you can see around over here. Later we shall also see what these adobes look like if you tear open a bag also. So that's pretty much it.